What's happening guys? Sam Adams here and welcome to a brand new episode of Cabinet today for February the 5th of 2019. My name is Samuel Adams and welcome to today's show. For those that are brand new to the program, this is a daily gaming news podcast where I bring you the hottest gaming news from around the industry and let you guys know what is going on in one tight, neat little podcast for you to enjoy whatever time of day you might be enjoying it. And of course, if you do want to catch the show live, it is hosted on twitch.tv slash the Samuel Adams five nights a week at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, Monday through Friday. But hey, if you can't make it to the live recording, then by all means, it's up on YouTube as well as podcast services around the world, just for you to enjoy. Now, with that being said, we saw the announcement and the launch of Apex Legends yesterday, a brand new Battle Royale first-person shooter from the development team behind Titanfall. And now, we have some news about Titanfall itself. That's right. Unfortunately, they were wrong yesterday. Just kidding. Uh, Titanfall 3, or whatever the next Titanfall may be, could be coming out as soon as 2019. On top of that, Apex Legends, the game that we just talked about, has hit a large milestone within hours of release. One million players. Now, on top of that, crossplay is coming, according to Respawn, to Apex Legends. But don't worry, that's the end of the Apex Legends discussion for today. The show has been going on for less than one minute, and I believe I've said the name of that game four times. Uh, with that being said, Kingdom Hearts 3 shipments and digital sales, top 5 million. Pretty solid for Kingdom Hearts 3. On top of that, uh, Vivox, or Vivox, not sure how to pronounce that company, uh, says that the Fortnite voice chat tech is coming to other Nintendo Switch games. Microsoft Studios is dead. Long live Xbox Game Studios. A Pennsylvania lawmaker uh, has debated video games syntax during state's esports month. We'll talk more about what that means. A Halo amusement park is going to be coming to the U.S. this summer, and Sea of Thieves is offering up players a bountiful booty. That's right, I said that out loud. Uh, because, guess what? You can play for free with your friends for a limited time only. So, hey, we'll talk about more of that kind of stuff throughout today's show. So, if it sounds like a show you might be interested in, go ahead and stick around. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the hottest gaming news of the day. First off, EA says a new premium Titanfall is coming this year. EA offers a bit more detail on the new Titanfall after Vince Zampella teased the return of the big robots on Twitter. And so, we'll start with the original story. Respawn Entertainment took the wraps off the Titanfall set box Battle Royale Apex Legends yesterday, and it turns out to be really good. It is not, however, Titanfall 3, which in the wake of an unexpectedly excellent Titanfall 2, is something that fans of more conventional shooters, like myself, the author says, and I would argue myself as well, would really like to hear about. Yesterday, Apex Legends lead producer Drew McCoy poured cold water on those hot hopes when he said that despite what you may have heard, Respawn is not making Titanfall 3. Today, however, Respawn's CEO Vince Zampella said this, Tons of things planned for a uh, at Play Apex in the future, and we are also committed to listening to player feedback. We are also working on more Titanfall for later in the year. Yes, I said the T word, he says. We love being able to experiment in this crazy universe. Now, before anyone gets too excited, bear in mind that, quote, more Titanfall could refer to just about anything related to the series. It could be a mobile game, or a mode for Apex Legends, or a comic book. It could be the Apex Scrolls, a new digital card game where you put tiny cards inside of big cards. Full credit to Steven and James over there at PC Gamer for that idea. The only thing we can say for certain is that it is not the realistic VR war game Respawn announced in 2017. One of Zampella's followers asked about that, and he replied with a resounding no. Wild speculation is fun, but there has been an update to the story since then. The update says, in its quarterly earnings call today, EA said that it has now a new premium Titanfall something coming this year. Premium in this case rules out another free-to-play experience. Now here's what Andrew Wilson himself said. Quote, while I don't have more to share with the particulars of what we have coming from Titanfall, Respawn are a tremendously creative team. They always anticipated that Apex Legends would be a spectacular game in the BR genre, and that they'd use that as a ramp point to deliver a truly creative take on what Titanfall is in a premium context later on in the year. So, with all that being said, it does seem that between the original leak or the original mention of a brand new Titanfall experience coming in 2019 and the EA earnings call that happened earlier in the day, there is very much so a new Titanfall experience coming at some point uh, before the end of 2019, I suppose, if this is to be believed. Now, is it going to be Titanfall 3? 
I would say no because of what the original leak actually did mention that Titanfall 3 was not in development and that you know Apex Legends had pretty much taken over that entire kind of space if you will also in the chat Alan appreciate the sub three months in a row let's go baby how you doing bud uh, but I digress you know Apex Legends looks to be a pretty solid experience and the question is will this actually transition into bringing Titanfall back from the dead in a way uh, because I saw somebody on Twitter Chris Raygun mentioned that if it were not for Apex Legends and the incredible interest that it has driven over the course of the past 24 hours we might not have seen anything from the Titanfall universe at all going forward that's something that I think is a very interesting thought but speaking of that rampant success Apex Legends hits a big milestone within hours of release, and the BR game has hit the ground running. The new BR game, announced just yesterday and released by the makers of Titanfall, is off to a fast start. Studio head Vince Zampella announced that the game has reached 1 million unique players in under 8 hours. Zampella said he is, quote, so overwhelmed by the news. An update in a conference call with investors on Tuesday, just a day after release, EA now says the game has reached 2.5 million unique players and has seen 600,000 concurrent players. That is absolutely nuts for a game that had zero marketing going into the week and has now been released. That is crazy. Thank you so much for showing up and being part of this with Respawn. You are amazing, Zampella said with a celebratory image. Apex Legends, which is set in the Titanfall universe but doesn't feature the franchise's trademark Titans or wall running, was announced and released today, February 4th, or yesterday, I suppose, for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. And of course, on the subject of wall running, which is something that is noticeably absent from a game set in the Titanfall universe, Zampella said it wasn't as fun and balanced, but he did tease that Respawn will try new stuff as the game's life goes on. Could we be seeing a limited time mode with wall running enabled? Absolutely. Could we see Titans enabled in some kind of limited time mode? Potentially. I mean, if Fortnite can do crazy stuff like they're doing, why can't Apex Legends do the exact same stuff? Uh, so overall, Apex Legends is looking to be a big contender to be a big Battle Royale game this year. I wasn't too sure about it going into the game, but after spending probably around an hour and a half with it so far, there is a lot of potential here, and it is much more engaging uh, for me than something like Ring of Elysium or Fortnite right now, uh, because you do have a different kind of mechanic that is introduced whenever you have a specific skill set uh, that is given to each individual legend. I think that's something that is really changing the game uh, in a good way when it comes to Battle Royale, but it is a very legit game, and again, it is free. So that's something that is fantastic in my opinion because, hey, free, my friends. Oh, it's for me, all right. Now, moving on to the subject of crossplay because everybody is talking about crossplay between the Nintendo Switch and the Xbox One, as we talked about yesterday with Xbox Live coming to the Nintendo Switch as well as iOS and Android. But Apex Legends crossplay is coming as confirmed by Respawn. Now, that is something that is pretty dang cool. Respawn Entertainment hit the ground running yesterday with the stealth release of Apex Legends, a free-to-play battle royale game that runs like a hybrid of Overwatch, Borderlands, and Rainbow Six Siege. Borderlands? I don't know about that one, Chief. Rainbow Six Siege? Again, have you played this game? Uh, the studio behind Titanfall 2 and the upcoming Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is enjoying the fruits of its labors right now, but has also stressed that this is just the beginning for Apex Legends with a year-long roadmap already on the table. In addition, Respawn's lead producer Drew McCoy confirmed in an interview with Eurogamer that crossplay for Apex Legends is in the works, saying that the developer, quote, plans to allow players to play with their friends on other platforms at some point in the future. Now, the game is currently out on PC, PS4, and Xbox One, but players on each platform cannot squad up together, while other BR titles like Fortnite do feature full crossplay between multiple platforms, including mobile. And so, of course, they do hope to uh, offer this in the near future. And I'm sure that the current tech is in development right now behind the scenes. Because when it comes to linking networks together, uh, that is something that does take some time. Of course, you have to make sure that that connection is stable. Because if you do release it too early, uh, then people playing on PC might have an advantage over PS4 and Xbox One players even more so than they already do with mouse and keyboard. Uh, but I digress. It's in the works, and that's something that I think is fantastic, especially going into the next generation. Uh, because as we talked about yesterday on the show that we saw last night 
on this channel, uh, you did have the statement that this is supposed to be a 10-year game for Respawn. They're trying to make Apex Legends a game that evolves over time. Now keep in mind, the original Destiny was said to be a 10-year game as well, so those kind of plans can definitely change. Uh, but if they do have that kind of forward-thinking mindset, then the ability to play between PS4, Xbox One, and PC is something that is incredibly valuable going forward and something that is incredibly exciting for many people, including myself. So again, if you did want to dive in, the game, as I've said three times now, is free on the PS4, Xbox One, and the PC. And it has many awesome features, such as respawning, as Alan does point out in the chat, in an interesting way. But hey, I could go further into that. I would encourage you to try it out for yourself. So for fans of Apex Legends, that was your section of the show. You got a full 10 minutes. Congratulations. Now moving on to the other news. Kingdom Hearts 3 shipments and digital sales have topped 5 million. That's not too dang shabby. Kingdom Hearts 3 has already shipped more than 5 million copies worldwide. Square Enix announced today that Kingdom Hearts 3 now stands at over 5 million units shipped on both PS4 and Xbox One. This figure also includes digital copies sold to consumers. Considering the game only came out one week ago, it is an impressive launch we call. As a result, Kingdom Hearts 3 is now the fastest selling game in series history. Earlier this week, it was revealed that it also had the most successful UK launch week for a Kingdom Hearts game ever, so the reception has definitely been strong in markets outside of the US and Japan. And so if you picked up a copy for yourself, you can always go over to the guys at VG247 and let them know what you thought. Uh, but with that being said, very impressive stuff here without a doubt. Uh, I will be the first to admit that I did not buy Kingdom Hearts 3. I have no intention of buying Kingdom Hearts 3. It's not a game for me. I didn't like Disney growing up. I don't like Disney now. I went to Disney World one time in my senior year of high school, and I thought I was going to climb to the top of the little magical building in the middle, what do they call those castles, and try and jump off. It was abysmal. I hated it. Uh, but, obviously, in my case, Kingdom Hearts is not for me. Uh, but if you are a big fan of Kingdom Hearts 3, it has been a very successful game. Uh, a really impressive looking game graphically, but on top of that, the gameplay that I've seen has been up to fan standards. Uh, people love what Kingdom Hearts 3 is bringing to the table, and I've seen pretty much nothing but good news coming out about Kingdom Hearts 3. So, considering this was pretty much uh, the cherry on top for the entire franchise, the one that ruled them all, so to speak, uh, it's pretty good to see that it is, in fact, a good game and that sales are strong. So, hey, congratulations to the team behind the scenes at Square Enix and also congratulations to the fans of Kingdom Hearts. You finally got a good one that doesn't have a fraction, like 358 days over two. Why? Now, moving on to some more interesting news that is more tech-related, in my opinion. Fortnite voice chat tech is coming to other Nintendo Switch games. That is something that Switch owners are going to be loving. Integrated voice chat service v Vivox or Vivox, whatever it might be, I'm gonna call it Vivox, is releasing a software development kit hat that will add both text and voice chat to Nintendo Switch titles. The software will allow third-party developers to utilize the tech in a variety of games, including multiplayer titles. Currently, Nintendo Switch Online's proprietary system does not include online voice chat support. As a result, titles like Epic Games Fortnite rely on Vivox on Switch for chat given that those on other platforms regularly play with those on the system. Strange way to say that. Meanwhile, Hi-Rez Studios Smite and Paladins will soon be adding support in upcoming game updates. Developers could implement the chat and allow players to speak to others via headset plug directly into the console, as any modern console developed after 2005 should probably be able to do, uh, which would widen the horizons for Switch owners feeling left out by the system's lack of proper voice functionality. Quote, we've already seen a great deal of success with Nintendo and the use of our voice services in Fortnite, said Dave Verratti, president of Vivox. Multiplayer games can and should excel on Nintendo Switch, and we're excited to see the results of the Vivox SDK on the Nintendo Switch. Those interested in working alongside Vivox to implement this kind of functionality in new or current games on the market can reach out to the company to partner with them. With crossplay on the rise and seen through multiple titles on the market, such as Rocket League and Fortnite, voice chat for multiplayer titles will undoubtedly become something of a boon, especially with simpler implementation on the table. This is something that is absolutely amazing to see. Okay, so for those that don't know what is happening with the Nintendo Switch multiplayer functionality, 
You can play games online. For many games, you do have to have access to the Nintendo Switch online subscription service. Think PlayStation Plus or Xbox Live Gold with about a quarter of the utility. Uh, so with that being said, whenever you do dive in and try and play a game live on the Nintendo Switch and play with other people via multiplayer, you cannot simply plug in a headset for the Nintendo Switch. You have to go through your mobile phone and pretty much use it as kind of like a third-party Discord uh, sort of function uh, to be able to actually communicate with people in any kind of way, shape, or form. So, to see this kind of functionality be able to come to the Nintendo Switch, not only for Fortnite, uh, but also for other kinds of multiplayer games, definitely makes the Nintendo Switch more of a contender uh, when people are trying to decide where they want to play their online multiplayer games. Especially for something like, and of course, I know the game is not out right now, but Apex Legends, the game we've been talking about a lot lately, if that were to ever be on the Nintendo Switch, it is such a voice chat slash interaction heavy experience uh, to have no kind of function functionality for that whatsoever would be absolutely crippling, especially if cross-platform play was going to be implemented as well. So with that being said, it's awesome to see this kind of tech coming to other games outside of Fortnite, and hopefully at some point in the next, I don't know, two decades, uh, Nintendo could potentially add something of a native voice chat, but hey, if we're being real, probably wouldn't be half as good as this third-party solution that we see right here. Also to random streak in the chat, welcome in my friend, glad to see you. Microsoft Studios is dead, but long live Xbox Game Studios. It has been re-rebranded. That's right, yet again. Microsoft has rebranded its game development business just slightly from Microsoft Studios to Xbox Game Studios. This new name comprises all 13 game studios and publishing organizations that Microsoft has gobbled up over the years, including... That's right, including Fallout New Vegas developer Obsidian Entertainment, Halo House 343 Industries, Gears of War Studio The Coalition, Hellblade creator Ninja Theory, and Wasteland 2 Company in Exile Entertainment. The move is intended to solidify Xbox as Microsoft's all-encompassing gaming brand, covering players across PC, mobile devices, and consoles, according to Xbox Game Studios Corporate Vice President Matt Booty. Nice name. The next generation of gaming consoles is expected to launch in 2020, and Xbox is rumored to be building two devices, one of which is apparently designed specifically for streaming games. It seems Xbox is stacking its roster of in-house studios to head off a major criticism it faced in the current console generation, a lack of Xbox exclusive games. Plus, Xbox is well positioned to launch a low latency game streaming service thanks to its Azure Cloud Network and Game Pass subscription plan. And of course, there's an entire list of Xbox Game Studios with tons of stuff coming down the pipe. Uh, but without a doubt, interesting to say the least, uh, that they're rebranding this yet again. Uh, bold move, in my opinion, because if you were to rebrand this, it seems to be a very Xbox-centric branding, as you can clearly see. Uh, so if any of these companies were to be, I don't know, making PC titles, perhaps that might muddle the overall marketing of the game that you're making. Again, this is all just my two cents. Uh, now, the big question here is, as a sin says in the chat, will Age of Empires 2 say Xbox Game Studios now? Who really knows at this point, you know? The next generation and as games do update uh, going forward is all kind of up in the air. It's a very strange time uh, for games being developed under this Microsoft Game Studios slash Xbox Game Studios brand. But without a doubt, uh, I am very confident in the future of all of these companies, all of these development studios are working on very impressive work right now. Uh, me, in particular, for myself, very excited about Obsidian. I think they're going to be doing some amazing things on the next generation of Xbox. But even more so, as this rebranding comes, and as these companies are acquired, and as all of this stuff is, is happening... I can't help but be excited about the next generation of consoles, specifically Xbox, because of course we all know PlayStation 5 is going to have some very incredible exclusives, but with this new Xbox Game Studios brand and the companies behind it, there is a huge, huge amount of potential for amazing experiences across genres and styles of play in the next generation Xbox, and of course subsequently on PC as well because of the whole Xbox Play Anywhere kind of initiative that we've seen over the past few years. But we'll see what happens in 2020 whenever I was going to... My, my mind went to politics with the election. Uh, but we'll also see what happens in 2020 with the brand new Xbox and, of course, subsequently, assumingly, presumably, PlayStation 5 that comes out in the same year. We'll see what happens with that. Interesting times ahead, my friends. Interesting times ahead. 
Now, this is a very interesting story that I saw earlier on Twitter. Pennsylvania lawmakers debate video game syntax during the state's eSports month. What an unfortunate time to be debating this type of subject. Uh, so, we have the original story, which I would assume is as follows, but hey, I suppose we'll start with the update. So, Pennsylvania legislators have once again introduced a bill to tax certain video games sold in the state. House Bill number 109 aims to impose a 10% tax on adult and mature rated video games sold at retail in addition to any applicable state and local taxes. Money collected will go into a newly created digital protection for school safety account and be used to enhance safety measures in Pennsylvania school districts. Representative Christopher, B., uh, Christopher excuse me, B. Quinn first introduced a version of the bill in October 2018, but it died in committee. Quote, over the past few years, acts of violence in schools seem to be occurring more frequently and with more intensity, he said in a September memo to his fellow House members. I know where this is going. Do you? From Colorado to Connecticut, and most recently in Parkland, Florida, students have experienced unthinkable actions by peers in a place that should promote learning and enrichment, safety and protection. One factor that may be contributing to the rise in and intensity of school violence is the material kids see and act out in video games. Quinn also pointed to a recent National Center for Health Research article that stated studies have shown that playing violent video games can increase aggressive thoughts, behaviors, and feelings in both the short term and long term. Violent video games can also desensitize people to seeing aggressive behavior and decrease pro-social behaviors such as helping another person and feeling empathy, the ability to understand others. The longer that individuals are exposed to violent video games, the more likely they are to have aggressive behaviors, thoughts, and feelings. And of course, Quinn's memo conveniently leaves out another section of the same article that makes a distinction between aggression and violence and notes that there is no clear evidence to support the assumption that increased aggression results in more acts of lethal violence or criminal behavior. It is important to keep in mind that violent video game exposure is only one risk factor of aggressive behavior, the article said. For example, mental illness, adverse environments, and access to guns are all risk factors of aggression and violence. House Bill number 109 has been referred to the PA. Pennsylvania House of Representatives Finance Committee. The Entertainment Software Association, which represents a number of video game publishers, called it, quote, a violation of the U.S. Constitution in a statement provided to Variety on Tuesday. The U.S. Supreme Court made clear in Brown v. Entertainment Merchants Association and Entertainment Software Association that video games are entitled to the full protection of the Constitution and that efforts like Pennsylvania's to single out video games based on their content will be struck down, the ESA said. And so they go on, but what I see here, what I see happening, is another attack uh, to try and make video games into a scapegoat for the violence that's happening across the country and really across the world. Because whether you realize it or not, people are trying to figure out why stuff's happening. You know, whenever there is a shooting, why did it happen? Whenever the, you see kids pull a gun on their grandma or whatever might happen, you're trying to figure out why. And when it comes down to it, it's an individual basis style of thing. Yes, there are certain things that could potentially kind of, I guess, nurture somebody into making these types of decisions, but there have been many studies that show that video games have little to no impact on this whatsoever. So to introduce a syntax is something that is more or less just trying to take money from people that are buying video games and put it towards making schools safer, which in and of itself isn't a bad initiative to begin with, uh, but to really inject that only into the gaming culture and into gaming industries, uh, that's something that I don't really agree with. Uh, so I wanted to let you guys know that this kind of stuff is actually happening, and it's on the books right now. So hey, if you're in Pennsylvania, make your voice known, uh, reach out to your representative and let them know that you uh, feel a certain way or another about what's happening here with the syntax on video games. However, I will almost 100% guarantee that this will yet again not make it out of committee. It's just going to die there because, quite frankly, I think there are bigger battles to fight in today's political climate, but I digress. And as we see, Random Streak in the chat says, old people need to chill. I mean, that's one way to put it. I'm not even going to lie to you. So, moving on to the next story of the day, a Halo amusement park will tour the U.S. this summer. Now, this one sounds much more fun. Halo Outpost Discovery offers 300,000 square feet of sci-fi fanfare. Finally, it's time to see if warthogs are really that difficult to drive in person. I would guess they probably are. Those things handle like you're driving on a giant platter of butter. Halo Outpost Discovery is a 300,000 square foot traveling amusement park packed with experience from, uh, excuse me, experiences from Xbox's pivotal sci-fi franchises, and it is set to start touring the U.S. this summer. The show will land in Orlando, Philadelphia, Chicago, Houston, and finally Anaheim between July and September. 
Outpost Discovery is scheduled to run for a single weekend in each city, where it will feature a real-life Halo ring and warthog. Sounds like it's not actually drivable, by the way. A laser tag arena, escape room, VR, and simulation stations loaded with Halo experiences and panels to its end. The Halo ring attraction is a dome projection experience, and there are esports and kid-friendly activities as well, according to designers. The whole thing is being planned in partnership with Dollywood operator Hershen Live. And... We have the dates in Orlando from July the 5th to the 7th, Philadelphia from July the 19th through the 21st, Chicago from August 2nd through the 4th, Houston from the 16th to the 18th of August, and Anaheim from the 30th of August to September the 1st. And of course, you can always check out the official tickets, which are in fact going to cost you an ultimate total of... Drum roll, please. A three-day VIP ticket is $320. One VIP Friday ticket is $140, and that's the same for Saturday and Sunday as well. Now, if you did want to get the general admission for three days, $130, or just a general admission in general, general, $60. Bucks. Not too shabby, if I do say so myself. I mean, it's a pretty cool experience to have if you are a big fan of Halo. Now, this is something that just popped up out of nowhere, but I will say that I'm pretty impressed so far as to what it actually looks like. Uh, but overall, you know, it's a cool experience to see, number one, a giant halo ring projected up. To be able to kind of, you know, uh, conglomerate together with your fellow nerdy-ass gamer people and check out what is going to be coming in the world of Halo and to be able to have these VR experiences and all that. It's a, it's a cool time, you know? Uh, so again, if you do want to dive in and check out what you've got coming on here with the Halo Outpost Discovery, it's going to be coming to cities around the country. And again, those cities are... Orlando, Philadelphia, Chicago, Houston, and Anaheim over the course of the summer. Check it out if you are in one of those cities nearby. Now, moving on to the final story of the day. If you are a fan of Sea of Thieves, or perhaps if you're a fan of one of the many, many Sea of Thieves streams that seem to have taken over Twitch as of late, guess what? You can play for free if you've got a friend. Dang, looks like I'm out of luck. Uh, but Rare's latest title, Sea of Thieves, lets you live out your pirate fantasy by captaining your own ship, sailing across the sea, and hunting down treasure. However, being a swashbuckler isn't nearly as exciting if you have to do it alone. Can confirm, play the game alone. Not nearly as fun. Today, Microsoft and Rare announced a new Friends Play Free event that allows anyone who owns Sea of Thieves or subscribes to Xbox Game Pass to invite up to three friends to try the private game, private pirate game, pirate private game, yeah, for a limited time. You can get codes for your friends from February 6th through the 13th. And to make this event more exciting, Rare is running a limited time quest to find the treasure of Rum Runner. Those who complete the quest will get special rewards. And to get your friends codes, you can head over to the link included via the article, which I have linked down below in the YouTube video. If your friends play the game with you and decide to become permanent members of your crew, Sea of Thieves will be available at a 35% discount until February the 27th. And in addition, the team teased that big Sea of Thieves news will hit on the one-year anniversary of its launch on March the 20th. So, again, if you have not played Sea of Thieves, number one, if you have Game Pass, you literally have the game. So dive in and get three friends, and hey, you got a full pirate squad there to go grab some booty. He touched the butt. Uh, but overall, very cool to see this game have a resurgence. Of course, it very much so is a squad-based kind of experience. If you don't have friends to play with, get some friends, come play it. Uh, but it's cool to see it kind of make a resurgence because of Twitch streams. It really has become somewhat of a, a, a giant phenomenon over the past, I would say two months maybe, uh, specifically with Summit 1G becoming just a god of the game, a, a pirate god, if you will, somewhat of a, uh, of a black beard in many people's eyes. But if you did want to dive in and check it out, then by all means, you can see it right now. Free if you have Game Pass, and again, it's at a 35% discount until February the 27th with new content hitting or at least being announced on March the 20th. But that wraps it up for today's episode of Caffeinate. If you guys did enjoy today's show, be sure to drop me a like down below if you are watching on the YouTube video. For those joining me live in the chat, I appreciate you guys as well. And as Random Streak said, I low-key feel ASMR from your voice. Yes. Thank you. That's the goal. Uh, but I'll be back tomorrow for a brand new episode of Cavanade. You guys have a fantastic one. And until then, peace.